buying properties off the HUD home store ongoingly at huge discounts. By the way, not at the price that HUD is asking either. We're buying about 65% of HUD asking price. How many of you like that plane? It's a beautiful plane. And I've got um, many of our clients making over $500 a month positive cash flow. So, you know, on the tax, uh, the D, it gives you, there's the county record that, and it says transfer tax, and then the recording fee, right? Right. It, isn't it a giveaway that if you have a huge amount of, if there isn't a transfer tax, which tells me it's not really a sale, it's just transfer from one to a trust. That's right. So wouldn't it, wouldn't it make it a giveaway that you're really the owner transfer? You actually have a choice, and I, I call it the paranoia scale. <laughs> Where are you on the paranoia scale? So the more paranoid you are, go ahead and pay it. Make it look like a sale. That's a lot pay the tax. Then don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's here's, just here's what they and there's a form they give you. Put it up. It, no, she's saying that the fact that you the didn't pay any transfer tax. There is no transfer tax away. if you transfer right. the property well, into okay. a trust. I understand, but the, the other issue is when you transfer it, if you want to, uh, then they're going to reassess it, they're going to look at the new value, and then your ta tax is going to go up. That, so but, you have to look but at here, here's, your here's the answer. Yeah. Would, would you like the answer? Sure. Here's the yeah. answer. Okay. The answer is nobody knows who the beneficiary is. The beneficiary can change at any moment in time. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. So the fact that you used to own it is history. Nobody knows what happened after that. So they can accuse you of anything, but it doesn't have to be true. In fact, it could change right before you go in for the deposition. That's <laughs> good. When you go to sit down, you say, Ooh, I, do you own anything? Don't own a thing. Don't own a thing. <laughs> accused of it a lot. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> All right, so why he can do say uh, that's what I right? could say because I'm not part of the brethren. <laughs> yeah, they they have to do blood oaths and all uh, <laughs> don't want to go there. Uh, so we have a three day training coming up in Atlanta. In fact every three months I do a training for my licensees and it's called Millionaire Jumpstart and you're all invited. Now this is three-day training, and we do everything including trusts. We also do my whole buying strategy, my selling strategy, how we find the, watch this one, how we find the buyers before we buy property. We've already got customers before we buy the property. And then we go buy customers, excuse me, we go buy property to match what that customer is, what they can afford. And that's our, our, our affordable housing program. In fact, you become a certified affordable housing provider. And that means that it's whatever the person can afford, not the home, not the price of the home. It's what the person can afford. And I teach you how to do that. And there's some really cool stuff, as well as trust. We're actually going to fill out some paperwork in class, and you'll see exactly how to do the deed transfers. How many of you like that? Is that a good thing? Yeah. I'm inviting all of you to that. Question. All right. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that you can do these with HUD. Can you do it with Freddie Mac as well? Absolutely. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHAVA, all four of those have guidelines. Ben, <laughs> DIC, stay away from that. <laughs> I have a question. Let's see that I can buy a house. Okay, use our my own name or LLC. After that, then we transfer to a, to, to a, to a trust. Okay, which way is better? You buy from the trust better, or you buy from, use your name or your OLC better? We can't do anything about the properties you already own, uh -huh. so those are going to have to transfer from your name to the trust name. Yeah. Anything you buy new, right into the trust. Better. Right into yes. the trust. And again, individual trusts. Okay. Each property has its own trust. Okay. So Far so better. So each trust has its own EIN? No, no, no. 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 Don't Just even one. have to do that. We're going to obtain one EIN number, and we're going to use that for all the trusts. It's like an umbrella. Unless they're HUD properties. They're HUD properties. Each trust is going to have to get its own EIN number. In other words, if you're buying off the HUD home store, you have to create the trust and the EIN number to bid under that number because they want a Social Security number, right? So you're going to have to have that number. 
But other than that, you can get one number and use it for all the trucks. Can I ask what does EIN mean? And ask me, what was your name again? B. 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 Ask me. Is it in your class? <laughs> she asked me three times. Is it in there? <laughs> yeah, it's in there. Okay. <laughs> so all the stuff I'm telling you is in there. <laughs> and I've got these nifty CDs, which I don't know if y'all have noticed. Y'all got plenty of time to listen to CDs. Have you noticed that? <laughs> y'all got plenty of time around here to listen to CDs. So what I've done is I've actually laid this out for you step by step. Now, how many of you ever gotten in the car and the CD starts over every time you get in the car, right? Yeah. No, we don't do that. So, I, <laughs> so I've designed this so that each track has its own name. So you can actually, when you're looking up a piece of information, you can actually go to that track. Is that a good thing? Yes. Yeah. I wish this is how I could have ingested this information. So I wrote this the way I wish I could have gotten it. And, and you're going to get the benefit of all that. Now, if you're worried about your parents transferring their assets to trust, then here's what you're going to do. Don't you tell them to do it. Say, Mom, Dad, here's what I'm planning to do. I'm planning to transfer my properties into trust, and I'd love to have your opinion. Now, you haven't asked them for their opinion, and God knows how long. <laughs> <laughs> So all of a sudden they're going, oh my God, my child asked for my opinion. This is a cool thing. So, so you say, here, listen to these CDs. And after they listen to these CDs, they're going to say, do it. Because I'm spelling it out, item by item, step by step, why this is an absolutely brilliant thing to do. And so then you get your parents on board with transferring their assets. Who am I helping? when they transfer their assets to trust? You. You're the one who has to deal with it. See, I noticed that dead people just really don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> they just really are gone. <laughs> so it's the living that have to deal with the dead person's stuff, right? When you plan, when you help them plan, and move these assets now into the trust, nothing to think about anymore. It's all done. And literally, at the time, because I went through the same thing myself. When my mom passed away, we already had the house in trust, we had our car in trust, we had our bank account in trust. All I had to do that day is grieve. There was nothing for me to think about or do because it was already done. Then a few months later, I sold her house and I went to the closing. And since I was the trustee, I signed the document and I got the big fat check. And because I was the successor beneficiary of the trust, it was my check. And I got to go and cash the check. Is that a good thing? Mm -hmm. See, now this is exactly how your life is going to unfold when I help you get your parents' assets in the trust. Now, what I'm sharing with you is a license. You become a licensee of a system. And I'm going to give you a license number. So each person, each business has to have their own license. So you're purchasing a license. I'm giving you the product. It's a medical thing. The state of California doesn't charge tax. taxes on a license. Who am I helping, baby? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what happens is now you, you become a licensee in my system. This number will actually go into our system as your number, and it matches this number on the disk. Now, you will be given the land trust and the personal property trust, and these are called guidebooks. So it literally guides you step by step how to fill out the document. Oh, yeah, no separate tax return. We covered this. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, here it is. What's your name? Me? Yes. Daniel. Daniel. You asked me about dual sites, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, look at this. So. The Garn St. Germain Federal Depository Institution Act of 1982 says that there's an exemption to the due on sale clause. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you think that rich people hold their assets in trust? How many of you think there's rich people in Congress? 
how many of you think they make laws that are favorable to rich people? <laughs> <laughs> so the congressman being bought by the banks, I mean, I mean, um, uh, being <laughs> attributed to by the banks. <laughs> Erase that. <laughs> they said to themselves, well, this is cool. We'll help the banks get this due on sale clause in the mortgage, but we got to look out for ourselves first. We might be transferring our property into trust. We don't want the bank to be able to call a loan due. So they put an exception in there. When you place your property in trust, for what kind of purposes? Expanding purposes. <laughs> the lender, watch this. The lender may not exercise its option pursuant to a due on sale clause upon a transfer into an inter vivos trust. <laughs> now, what kind of trust do you think these are? <laughs> inter vivos type <laughs> trust. Isn't that a cool thing? <laughs> All right, so what just happened is the deed gets transferred from the seller's name into the trust name, and now the trust owns the property and you control the trust. So you will make the payments out of your trust bank account on that mortgage forever, if you choose to. How many of you love that plan? Welcome to my world. Question. This is what I do. Yes, sir. Um, what's what's the your name? Steve. Steve. What's the safeguard for the seller? I mean, okay, you're taking it over, Let's we say don't you have don't time for that tonight, oh, okay. but I promise I will cover that on Saturday because that's a long answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. a really long answer. But, uh, uh, but it's a very powerful answer because what we do is actually show the seller what's in it for them. So oh. there is something in it for the seller to do it this way. And, uh, and you'll see when I do the cost of sale worksheet on Saturday mm -hmm. that there's actually more money that you can pay them in the transaction because they're allowing you to do this. And it's mm. the same money you would have given the bank. Yeah. The same money you already spent with the bank, you're just going to credit it back to the seller and take over their loan. Now, your credit report is fully intact. You didn't have to run to the bank and stand there with your big stacks of paper and try to look good. You don't have to look good at all anymore. <coughs> it's a beautiful thing. How many of you love this plane? Oh, baby. Welcome <laughs> to my world. I have a question. Yes. yes. If like, a seller, I still need to have the name of the mortgage, right? If he wants to buy another house, it has to be difficult. Ah. Mm -hmm. You think I might have heard that question before? Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're absolutely right. Now, if they're simultaneously buying a new property at the same time that they're transferring this one, no problem. If they're buying it later, then you have to you do a letter to the lender stating, and with a copy of the deed and a copy of the HUD-1 closing statement. It's exactly what Felix was talking about, my HUD-1 closing statement. Yeah. You know how he used to say, oh, it's the best thing ever. You give them a, you create your own HUD-1. And you create your own, and you actually provide that to them. So there's proof of a sale, and there's proof that there was a transfer. And guess what, on a federal document called a HUD-1, the words subject to are actually on that document, right there. Subject to, so it's not illegal at all, it's right there, and in fact we fill that out. So we give that to the lender, and they check that off the list. Oh, this mortgage is still showing up on the credit report, but there's been a sale. There must be some screw-up snafu somewhere. That's usually what happens. By the way, has anybody got any things on your credit report that aren't yours? Yeah, it's that, that very common that credit reports aren't accurate. So that's typical in their world, too. <clears throat> Let me show you this. Today was a big day using the forms of ethics teaching course. I bought three houses in one day. Not one, not two, but three. Better yet, in each case, the seller sold me the property subject to existing mortgage balances, forms of street smart buying, selling, and holding. Did all the negotiating for me. It was as easy as filling in the blanks. These deals mean over $80,000 in instant equity and profit, not to mention the, the cash infusion, monthly positive cash flow, magic of speeding up how quickly these homes are free and clear of the years ahead by prepaying principal the way you teach. Now, the cool thing about what Stefan did, he's from Arizona, 
This is house number one that he bought that day. How many of you love that house? Is that a pretty house? Yeah. Stunning new home, original owner, one year old, four bedrooms, two and a half baths, three car garage, 2,415 square feet, motivated sellers, overwhelmed by the payment, agreed to deed the property subject to the existing mortgage balances, did not expect or want any cash. He took over an existing 5.99 and 7.5% mortgage exit strategy sell using my methods. All right, house number two. Motivated seller agreed to sell the property for mortgage balance. Property and area plans to be zoned historic. Two bedroom, one bath, one car garage with a one bedroom, one bath guest house already rented. He bought that house for $10. So house number one he bought for $10. House number two he bought for $10, subject to the existing loan. Okay. Exit strategy, sell the house using the street smart owner financing agreement for deed method with down payment auction twist. Biggest down payment auction wins. This is another technique I teach you. Instead of selling, instead of auctioning off the house, you auction off the down payment. And it's another technique that I'm going to teach you. It's really cool. Submitted by three year stark raving whole enchilada owner, Stefan Cassie. Here's house number three. Motivated seller contact contacted us from Ad and Classified Real Estate Section. Four bedroom, two and a half bath with an in-law suite. The seller deeded the property subject to existing mortgage balance, didn't care about credit. How many of you believe it's possible to buy houses subject to the existing loan? Mm -hmm. 